Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 589. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 586 to 590. Hey, in this trick here, we're going to do a stem and leaf chart. I've done two other videos in Excel Statistics 28 stem and leaf chart. We did integers, right? So we wanted to do a stem and leaf. Here's the stem, that's the first tens position, and the ones position are here, so that means there's a 15 and a 19. 15 and a 19. And we use that formula right there. That's much scarier than it looks. You only have to do the first part and then copy it a bunch. But you can see it in that video. Then we did large numbers. Exo Magic Tricks 376. We did the stem is the first two digits, 18, 18, 19, 19. So those are listed here. And then the leaf is over here. Again, this is a statistical chart. This was a big array formula. Well, now we're going to do decimals, right? It's going to be similar to this big number one over here. It's going to be an array formula. And it is going to be quite a doozy here. Let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller here. Uh, now the first thing is whatever the range is here from smallest to biggest, I went ahead and did the min and the max. That way I know what stems to put because our stems here are going to be the uh, integer part and our leaf are going to be the decimal part. Our goal is to have 68, 86, and 87. Right? Those are the first, so we see 10, and then we go, it's 10.68, 10.86, 10.87. The stem and leaf chart, again, is a way of visualizing data, grouping it together, seeing patterns. All right, and you know, if you had a small data set like this, you know, why not just type it out? But it's when you have to do this over and over, or you have huge data sets. Um, you know, you just can't risk the error from doing it by hand or doing it by eye. And so that's where a big, nasty array formula. This is going to be a big array formula. Now, the first thing is, and by the way, we'll do the formula we're going to do will work on uh, numbers like this and numbers like this also. Now, let's first count. I want to count how many tens there are, 11s, 12s, 13s over here. Now, I'm going to actually go like this and right click hide. And I'm going to do my counting formula right here. Equals, and I'm going to use sum product. Sum product will add after, and it's going to be an array, and it will count. We want to count how many tens there should be, three tens, four elevens, etc. Um, I'm going to use the int function. Int can grab the integer part, because really we want to count the number of stems there are, so there should be three. What int does is it's expecting a number. As soon as we put in a range like this, forget it. It's no longer a regular formula, it's an array formula, because it will return an array of values. I'm going to highlight it and hit the F9 key. There's our 10s, 11s, and 12s, Control Z, and now we simply go, are any of those equal to this one right here? That will give us a series of trues and falses, but we don't want that. I'm going to put close parentheses, close parentheses. Come in front of the int and do double negative. The double negative will convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. Control Enter, and then I can double click and send it down. I can't double click, I have to drag it down. Mm. Forgot to lock this. I'm going to hit uh, in edit mode and I'm going to hit the F4 key, F4 key, control enter. Now I can double click it and down, send it down because something's below. So we don't have any 13s or 14s. Maybe you want to hack that off, but I'm going to leave it there. Now, unhide, right click unhide. Actually, you know what? I am going to uh, leave myself that much room. I'm going to Here's a cool trick. You can hide, right? And now when we copy this formula over, even though we're going to go from E to M, those hidden ones will get it also. Now I can make it a little bit bigger just to see, because this is going to be a wild uh, array formula here. We'll see if we can explain it as we go along. Uh, now the first thing is we have a bunch of columns from E to M, and we don't know. This, we're going to assume this is a variable data set. Sometimes maybe uh, there'll be one or two items, maybe there'll be 10. So however, whatever the maximum count is here is how many columns it needs to be wide. 
And since 10 has 3, right, when we get past the third one, then we need to show a blank there. So we're going to start this off by going if. And we're going to use our formula, uh, a number incrementer for a formula. So I'm going to use the columns with an S function. I'm sitting in E52, so I'm going to dollar sign E52 colon E52. Right now it says E to E is 1, but when I move it over here, this one's locked, this one's not, so it'll go. this will turn to F. And then what's after F? I think G. So it increments 1, 2, 3, 4 as you move across the columns. You say, is that incrementing number greater than our count? And this one needs to be locked with the F4 key 1, 2, 3 times. Column reference, when it goes this way, it's locked. But when it moves down, it needs to go to the next count. right? And so when that's greater than the count of 3, what do we want to show? The value, if true, will be double quote for blank. Otherwise, and the value if false will be our lookup function. We're going to use index. Index. And uh, the first thing is the array. Now, what we're trying to return is the um, decimal part. So just like we use the int to get the integer part, we need to now use something to get the decimal part here. Now, I'm going to use the write function. Write. Now, just like we um, text, um, we want all of these, right? Because we, we actually, for the, remember this is going into index, we need all, we need to look at all of these values here and return one at a time. So for the 10, we'd have to return the first three. But nevertheless, write, and I'm going to hit the F4 to lock it all directions. That's the text. Comma, and how many characters? Well, it's all two, right? Well, let's go take a look at this. I'm going to highlight it and hit the F9 key, F9. Now you could see, oh, it, 68 like, works. Oh, but what's that? 0.3. That didn't work. I'm going to Control Z to quickly get it back. I'm going to put this into suspension mode by putting my cursor and hitting a space. And I'm going to come down here, and when I put it in edit mode, you can see the reason the right doesn't see that zero because that zero isn't there. It's all formatting. So 0.3, it just doesn't see that. Formulas don't see formatting. So watch this. I'm going to click Escape, come back up here. And how about if I just go like this? There's two decimals over here, so I'll multiply by 100 times 100. Then it's got it, because times 100 slides the decimal over here, and then we have four decimal, uh, four integers there, four digits. And so it'll extract just fine. When we highlight this and hit F9, sure enough, now it gets 3-0, Control-Z. All right, index. That's just the beginning of the array formula. It's an array. This t uh, right is expecting a single cell reference there, and we're giving it a bunch, so that makes an array. But no, no problem. We have our array there. Those are all the values we want to extract. Now, now let's think about this. The row number. Again, um, for ten, we want one, two, three. We want those those three ones there to return in three different columns. Since there's multiple uh, matches in essence, because we're gonna, our match is going to come from the fact we're going to say, hey, 10, and it'll find all these 10s here, and then it will know to get those three. But because we have three items returning in multiple columns, for the row number, we're going to have multiple row numbers. Now, 1, 2, 3 would be the row numbers successively, 1, 2, 3. Because we have multiple row numbers, and we need to, um, in essence, extract the smallest one, then the next smallest, and the next smallest. We're going to use small. Now, what is the test? The test is going to be the integer part. So now, we need to say if. And really, our goal is to get row numbers for the index. So we're going to say if. And we can't just highlight those. We're going to use the int, because now we need to say if any of these. And hit the F4 and lock it all directions close parentheses. Any of those are equal to this. And then lock it, F4, F4, column lock, but not the, the row reference. right? So now that'll give us a series of trues and falses. right? True, 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 false, false, etc. Comma. Now what's the value? Well, we're interested in the row number. This small construction is just in order to get the right row number for index right there. So I'm going to say the row of all these. 
F4, F4, not F3. Close parentheses. Well, that's not going to work because row 49 is not 1. We need a 1 there, a 2, a 3, not 49, 50, 51. So we say minus row and click on this one, F4. Now that's not going to work either because row 49 minus 49 is 0. So we add 1 back in. So now that'll give us, if you highlight all this and hit the F9 key, you could see it gives us exactly what we want. There's 12 values, 12 numbers. Control Z. Now the small, this if part here, only when it sees a true, right, will it extract uh, the, the row number. There's a value of true. We do not need the value of false, so I'm going to close parentheses. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and highlight the if, right, that whole bit right there, and hit F9. Notice it gives us 1, 2, 3, false, 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 false. So for this row, it knows that the row numbers we need are 1, 2, 3. Control Z. But small has the array. We just need to successively extract them. So we're going to use our, our number incrementer, that piece right there. It'll successively tell the small function, take the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, because it'll give 1, 2, 3 as it copies to the side. Close parentheses. That's the small function closed off. The row number, well, that small is going to give us the row as we copy it. I mean, the Row? I thought we needed a column number. No, it needs a row number. Boom, boom, boom. We're going across columns and dumping the things returned from rows into columns. So we have our row number, close parenthesis there. Oh, and the value of false is that huge index thing there. And by the way, if you highlight it, it's just going to give us this .68. It's a lookup function with a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to hit F9. Sure enough, 68. Control Z. So I close parentheses on the if. I have everything we need. Control, Shift, Enter. This is an array formula. You can see the curly brackets right there. I copied over. It copied in the from G to M, even though they were hidden. Copy it down. Highlight there. Right click, unhide. And so there we have our uh, stem and leaf. We've extracted uh, for 12. Uh, the 30, the 49, the 55, the 66, and the 93. Now, one other very important aspect of this. You've got to sort these values. This formula is significantly easier to do. It would be uh, much more complicated if these numbers weren't sorted. But how hard it is, is it to sort, right? And right click sort. I do uh, smallest to largest, uh, or use the sort button. Down here, the same thing, the same exact formula works. Uh, we Again, we ha we're interested in two decimals. This is 100 because there's two decimals. If there was three decimal places up to, then you'd have to put 1,000 there, right? All right, uh, so there you have it, uh, another stem and leaf. Always amazed how many people are interested in stem and leaf. All three of these are big, nasty. Uh, uh, formulas. So if you want to study up on all of them, Excel Statistics 28, Magic Trick uh, 76, and then Excel Magic Trick 589. See you next trick.